Hi, welcome to this video on the QHY Pole Master. Now, if you're a Southern Hemisphere astronomer, this could be just what you've been waiting for. Polar aligning your telescope in the Southern Hemisphere, getting dark adapted, and trying to find Sigma Octantis through a visual poloscope can be quite a bit of a chore. Now, hopefully this is going to save you that chore. Um, so what is it? It's uh, actually a camera, as you might expect from QHY, um, and it's based off a similar sensor to the very popular QHY 5. Um, that would be this one here. Um, but instead of it being in the traditional mount in the eyepiece holder body, um, it actually has a specialized mount on the back and a 25mm lens uh, giving a 8 by 11 degree field of view. Uh, this camera when it's mounted on your telescope mount will show a view of the sky around the South Celestial Pole or North Celestial Pole if you happen to be in the Northern Hemisphere and make it really easy to polar align your mount. It takes five to ten minutes um, to align and you'll get results which are as good as drift aligning in uh, very much less time. So let's take a little look at this. It's um, in a, a very nicely made aluminium body um, comes with a screw-on lens cap and uh, as many of QHY cameras do comes in its own metal box. Um, there are a variety of mounts available, a variety of brackets available to suit different mounts I should say. Uh, this is the one for the iOptron ZEQ or CEM25 mount. Very easy to install, I'll show you how to do that in a minute. Uh, it comes with an Allen key um, for, the, for the central screw there. Um, also comes with a USB cable, as you might imagine, and uh, it has a very nice locking screw feature. It goes in there like that. So, I'll show you how to put this onto the mount, and I'll go over to my ZEQ25 and see how it fits. So on many types of mount, the QHY Polemaster fits in place of a visual poloscope. The iOptron ZEQ25 is no different. This is the bracket just showed you and uh, this simply pops in the hole where the visual pole scope normally goes. Just a simple press fit in and there's a screw on the inside. Use the supplied hex key or allen key just to tighten that up. Doesn't need to be too tight just so that it doesn't move around and that's the bracket fitted. Um, you would normally leave that in your mount ready for observing. So the Polemaster itself, when it comes to using it, um, simply drops in. The flange on the base here just drops straight in and tighten up with the thumb screw there. Now a little tip um, is that the port for the USB should be on the right hand side as you're looking at the Polemaster. If you do that then the image that you see when you connect this to the computer will be the right way up. That'll make it much easier to locate the stars you need to find the pole. So that goes in and simply tighten up the thumb screws. Um, always a good idea the string that's on the lens cap. Wrap that around so that you don't lose it in the dark. Now my recommendation is when you're not actually using the poloscope is to keep the lens cap on. That'll make sure that you don't have dewing problems. And if you do need to realign as you're viewing, you can just take that off again. Taking everything outside, this time I've got my OTA mounted on there and you can probably see the Polymaster is just there on the left hand side with the USB cable coming out towards the right. Now we're ready to go and start using the Polymaster for our power alignment. So in order to power align your mount, now you have your Polymaster installed, but you're going to have to first of all point it roughly towards the South Celestial Pole. Now, that can be a little bit trickier than it sounds. You do still have to understand what the sky looks like around the South Celestial Pole, or the North Celestial Pole, if you happen to be in the Northern Hemisphere. Um, and it also helps to understand how much of the sky the Pole Master can see. I've set up my Stellarium so that uh, we can get a view of what the 11 by 8 degree field of view actually looks like against the uh, sky. 
So this is a winter sky um, at about 20 past 9 um, here in New Zealand. So um, if I turn on this crosshair here, you'll see that's what it looks like. And if I just uh, zoom in here on the Southern Cross, you can see that it's a uh, field of view just a little bit wider than, uh, than the size of the Southern Cross. So how do we get started? How do we point our mount in the right location? Well, you should all know how to roughly find south, and there's many ways of doing that. Uh, one of them is to get a line of the, between the Southern Cross and between the pointers, and we'll know that the South Celestial Pole is roughly around this area. But how do we get that a little bit more accurate? Well, there's a few tricks. One of the ones that I use if, uh, if it's visible in the sky, the uh, Small Magellanic Cloud, or 47 Takane, uh, which is over here. If you can start off there, you can see that very well in a pair of binoculars, um, and move towards the Southern Cross, you'll see that there's three little stars in a triangle here. Now, if I just turn on our Pole Master view, you can see that we can, if we move around and move up, we get to the three little stars there and keep going. And then the very next brightest stars here are this little trapezium. So this little trapezium is the asterism around South Celestial Pole. And the star in the corner here on the narrowest part of this trapezium shape is actually Sigma Octantis. So this is what we're looking for to get into the view of the polar scope. Um, the South Celestial Pole is somewhere around here. So, if you set up your mount and get that lined up, you probably have to do a little bit of moving around to try and find that asterism. The easiest one that I've found is if you can find those three little stars, then that's going to point you. It's really a direct pointer towards the trapezium that we're looking for. With the camera now connected up to the computer, uh, we're starting to see an image on the screen of the stars. They're not very bright at the minute, so we'll adjust the exposure time. Uh, we can go up to 100, maybe 200 milliseconds. And maybe we'll put the gain up to 70. So now we can start to see the stars there a little bit clearer. Uh, one thing that we also need to do is make sure that we've got it set up for Southern Hemisphere. So we'll click on South. So we'll click finished for that, so we we now see the stars. So we've got this lined up pretty well actually, I can uh, actually make out the trapezium around Sigma Octantis, that's Sigma Octantis there, and there's the four stars of the trapezium around it. And uh, also there is the little triangle off to the side. So what we need to do now is actually double click on Sigma Octantis itself. This is probably the trickiest part that we have to do. We've got to do this a few times. I'm trying to get the crosses as close to the center of the star and then double click. Once we've done that, uh, we get a template on screen that will rotate around using the slider and try and match that up to all of the stars. A uh, little tip here is if you use the arrow keys on the keyboard, you can do the fine adjustments as I'm doing right now. Once we've got that about right, we can click on success and it'll move us to the next step. So the software is now saying, do I want to use the uh, axis center position we recorded last time? Because I've had the camera off and we're doing a new alignment, I'm going to say no and we'll go through the whole process. We have to now choose a star other than Sigma Octantis and double click it. Now this image is going to rotate around as we move the mount in the next step. So we're going to find something that's going to be easily recognizable. So I'm going to choose one of the other trapezium stars. I'm going to go with the one at the bottom here. Hopefully you can see my cursor and going to double click that as close to the center as possible. It is important to be accurate in this stage. Otherwise we're not going to get a very accurate polar align. Going to my mount now, uh, I've got to rotate the mount around a minimum of 30 degrees in the direction of that arrow. So just adjusting the mount around, you can see that the image is turning around and all of our stars are moving. So get that locked off. And now we're going to tell the software that we've finished rotating. So finding that star again, 
this uh, the same one in that narrow part of the trapezium. Again, being as accurate as we can, I'm going to just double click on right on the center of that star. It is a little easier, I think, to use a mouse rather than a laptop touchpad, particularly if your fingers are a little cold. So once again, we're going to have to rotate the mount around, same direction, and about 30 degrees again. So I'll just move the scope around. I'm just unlocking the clutches here, but you could actually use the hand controller to slew the mount around. Try and keep an eye on where your star is going, um, because as it disappears off the screen, can be a little tricky to find it if you've not kept an eye on what the patterns are. So we are going to try and find the center of that star again and double click on it. Incidentally, don't worry if you double click and you're not quite on the ball, not quite on the center of the star. You can just uh, double click again on a new point and that will reset your center point. So again, accuracy is really important in this step, more so than in any of the other steps, because here we're going to find the center of rotation of your mount by working at those three points. So I think that's about right. Go ahead and double click. And what the software is now doing is showing you the circle at which your star rotates. And I don't know if you notice, there's a little red dot in the middle. And that's the center of rotation. So moving my mount back into the home position, what we're going to now look for is that our star stays as close as possible on that green line. If it does, that means we've managed to click accurately each time on each of those steps. And we've confirmed that the geometric center of rotation of our mount does lie on the little red dot with everything moving in the, the line prescribed by that green circle. So that's great, and we can say that that's now correct and move on to the next step. Now, again, we'll have to click on Sigma Octantis. So by now you should know almost uh, immediately which one we've got to click on. Again, there's our trapezium. And as you know by now, as accurately as possible, we're going to double click on the center of that star. That's going to bring up our template. And uh, a few little tweaks. Uh, here I'm just going to use the left and right arrows. And we'll get that lined up. go. So I'll click success. The next step is going to be to adjust the altitude and azimuth of our mount so that we can get Sigma Octantis inside the green circle. And at this point we will be roughly polar aligned. So back to the mount and uh, each mount's different, but um, find your azimuth and altitude controls. And we're going to adjust those whilst watching the screen the whole time to try and shift it so that the picture changes such that the Sigma Octantis is in that green circle. So here we go. So I'm just adjusting the azimuth initially. Moving Sigma Octantis towards that green circle. Close. Maybe just a little bit more. Okay, we're just going to adjust the altitude now. No, not that way. I'll we'll just uh, move that the other way. This can be a little bit fiddly. see now in my magnify view at the top of the screen that the star is getting very close to the green circle so we're going to try and get that centered as accurately as we can this is of course uh, just a rough alignment uh, we're going to do a more precise one um, in just a minute but um, we'll try and get that as close to the center of the circle as we possibly can it's not too far off uh, a little more tweaks. Yeah, I think that's probably pretty much as close as we, we're going to get for this stage. So we'll um, go ahead and click finished and then we'll move on to the, um, the precise alignment. As you uh, might have guessed, we've got a 
double click on Sigma Octantis again. This is going to give us our template. Now if we did a good job and nothing's moved, this template should pretty much line up straight away. And it does. So moving on to the precise align. We click the start monitor button and what that does is draws a box around two of the stars in Octans and the software is going to track the position of those stars and from them calculate the where the position of the San Celestial Pole is overlaid on the image and that's shown with the green circle. The position of the center of rotation that we did in the previous steps is shown by the red so to get an accurate polar align what we need to do is make those two coincide. So this time the view on the left actually gives us the more accurate view, uh, the more zoomed in magnified view of this alignment. So we go back to our mount and adjust the altitude and azimuth again, making very small adjustments this time to get those two circles to overlay on top of each other. So here we go, back at the mount. We'll just adjust this in. Again, can be a little tricky and trying to remember which way to turn to get the movement that you want it can take some time. You can spend as uh, long as you want at this, this stage and in any of the previous steps to get more and more accurate. So as soon as we have both of these sitting directly over the top, you notice that the position, the calculated position, is moving around a little bit, and uh, that's of course just due to seeing conditions. adjustments. And there we go, I think that's probably as good as we're going to get. And that's really all there is to it. So now we're polar aligned, ready to go and do some imaging, and much easier, much faster than drift aligning or using a visual polarscope. If you need any more information or for purchasing the QHY Polemaster Poloscope, please do visit our website on www.astrons.nz. Thank you very much for watching.